When I got started with security cameras in my smart home years ago, it was frustrating. I had to constantly charge batteries, which required getting a ladder and a screwdriver just to reach the camera and to open up the battery compartment. My home was using cameras from several brands, so my wife and I had to remember which app to open to see the camera we wanted and then flip back to another app to see another camera. So by the time we got the right camera opened, the event that we wanted to check on had already passed. And they didn't allow us to see a 24 seven live recording with local storage. We could only get a live view in that moment. We couldn't scrub back through each moment in time to check on something. And if we wanted full access to all of our video footage, we would have had to pay a monthly subscription, which also meant our camera data was in the cloud. So I had to do something about this. In this video, I'll show you why and how I switched to Unify Protect for our security cameras, how I get the most out of them in our smart home, and if I would do it all over again. On this channel, I cover how tech can make you more productive, so if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Let's do this. When I decided it was time to upgrade our security cameras, I had five requirements. First, it had to be subscription free. This is video footage of our home. I didn't want to pay someone else into perpetuity just to access this content. Second, it had to use local expandable storage. I didn't want to be entirely dependent on the cloud, which would likely require paying a subscription. And that meant all of our data was in the cloud. With local storage, I'm in control of the storage volume. Third, it had to have continuous power. Charging security camera batteries is a hassle and inconvenient and time consuming. Rule number one in my smart home is that it should make me more productive, not less. Fourth, I wanted everything in one platform. No more hopping back and forth between different apps to check different cameras. Fifth, it had to integrate into my smart home for home automations, obviously. Now, at the same time that I was looking at cameras, I was also looking at improving our home's internet. I was tired of dropped video calls or having pockets around our home that had spotty connections. This was a barrier to expanding my smart home. Both of these searches converged in the same place with Ubiquiti Unify, which has both networking and security camera offerings. I actually made a whole separate video about my Unify networking setup for home internet, which I'll link to if you wanna check that out. I liked Unify because it met all five of my requirements, had good customer support and a strong online community that could help with troubleshooting or leveling up our system. So I decided to go all in with Unify networking and camera security. I purchased everything with my own money and Ubiquiti is not sponsoring this video. Now, similar to their networking equipment, Unify offers a wide range of security cameras and it can be overwhelming knowing which one is right for you. As of this recording, they have around two dozen options ranging from about $80 up to $2,500 for just a single camera. In the end, I went with four different types of Unify cameras, a G4 doorbell for the front door, a few G4 bullets and a G4 Pro for outside the home and several G3 instants for inside the home. All of my G4 cameras include AI event detections. This means I can get alerts for different types of events like motion, person, package, vehicle, and animal detection. But the AI also works for audio events like carbon monoxide or smoke alarms. Additionally, the G4 cameras allow me to set custom motion or smart detection zones. This way you can tell the camera to send alerts when something enters a very particular area of view and not just the entire field of view. You can also add privacy zones, meaning that area will not be recorded. Or you can add a crossing line, which will trigger a motion recording when something crosses it. With the G3, 
I'm limited to motion or privacy zones, which I'm fine with since I use these indoors. All of my cameras have two-way audio for speaking to anyone through the camera. They are also all plugged in for constant power, but in different ways. The G4 doorbell is hardwired in, whereas the G3 instant cameras each plug into a standard wall outlet. Both of these also connect to my network using Wi-Fi. In contrast, the G4 Bullet and G4 Pro cameras use a single power over ethernet or PoE cable for both power and data. The PoE cables all meet up on a unified 24 port switch on my networking rack in the basement. Ideally, all cameras would use PoE, but it wasn't practical to start opening up all the walls and adding ethernet drops in every room. Even though the G4 doorbell and G3 instance are connected to Wi-Fi and have 24 seven recording, they don't have any connection issues or lag. The G4 doorbell can be positioned at an angle mount so you can tailor the viewing angle to your home. This was great for us since we have kind of a strange front door layout with an entire flight of steps coming up on one side. It has a high definition two megapixel video resolution and IR night vision that's good for about 20 feet. The G4 doorbell costs about $200 and includes a small LCM display where you can show one of several pre-programmed messages such as welcome or leave a package at door or do not disturb or you can add a custom message. You can even choose the duration for how long to display any given message though we don't make that much use of this particular feature. This doorbell can work with a mechanical chime on your wall or a digital chime using smart home automations. While I have the option for both, I've got it paired with a digital ring chime. This way, I can have an automation to prevent the chime from ringing if it's during my kid's nap time or overnight when we're all sleeping. I have most of the G3 instance on this little mount that I found on Amazon. I'll leave a link for that along with everything I'm using in the video description. The G3 Instant by itself doesn't offer much flexibility in terms of mounting, so this accessory solves that. I can get any viewing angle that I want with it. I just had them sitting on top of a window shade bracket and kept in place with 3M hook and loop tape. This camera has similar night vision capability as that G4 doorbell. The G3 Instant is about $80, though I got them back when they were only about $30. It's frustrating how the suggested retail price of this camera increased by over 170%. The G4 Bullet is an outdoor PoE camera with a 2K or 4 megapixel video resolution. It comes with a three axis adjustable mount and better night vision rated for up to 30 feet. You can buy a separate IR range extender for up to over 80 feet of night vision, but I haven't used that. The G4 Bullet is about $200, just like the G4 Doorbell. Now, the G4 Pro is the most capable with a 4K, eight megapixel video resolution, three times optical zoom, and 50 foot IR night vision. While I'd love for all of my outdoor cameras to be the Pro version for the improved video quality and wider field of view, I found it cost prohibitive at about $450 per camera, which is more than double the cost of the bullet. I can view a live stream from all cameras at once using the Unify Protect app, along with any motion or AI detection events. If you want to be able to view your camera feeds when you are outside of your network, then you must enable remote access. With any Unify camera, You'll need a Unify console running Unify Protect and compatible external storage for saving your video recordings. I'm using the Unify Dream Machine Pro as my console, which includes a single bay where I've got an eight terabyte hard disk drive or HDD for my recordings. This HDD combined with the camera array in my home is good for about five weeks of continuous video recording history. You can upgrade to a dedicated network video recorder or NVR with multiple bays and the ability to save even more recordings, but the additional cost of the NVR coupled with the cost of more HDDs is not something that I can justify yet. 
Thankfully, there is a Unify Protect integration for Home Assistant, which is my smart home platform. I can see real-time camera snapshots on my smart home dashboard and click into any of those cameras for a live stream of the video and the audio. Each camera exposes a ton of entities to Home Assistant, which allows me to create home automations based on detection events like when a person approaches the front door or when the car enters the driveway or when any animal causes mischief in our backyard. Let's check out some of my home automations using Unify Protect cameras. The first and perhaps most logical use case is for events at the video doorbell. When a person is detected at the front door, my wife and I get a notification on our phones, including a thumbnail image of the person. When someone rings the doorbell, the same thing happens, but we also get a real-time image on our smart home control panel and Apple TV 4K showing us who was at the front door. This is in addition to having sound play from the connected digital chimes and an announcement play out across all of the smart speakers in our home saying that someone is at the front door. My family and I really benefit from these doorbell automations. The one frustrating aspect though is there can be a time delay between the detection event and the notification arriving on our phones. I've read that WebRTC may be one way to speed this up, but if you have proven experience or tips for reducing this delay, please let me know in the comments. The second use case is automatically opening the garage door when my vehicle enters the driveway. Configuring this automation for my exact setup was a little more involved, and I'll link to a separate video where I explain it in full detail. But at a high level, the automation works by knowing when my iPhone is connected to CarPlay and using the driving focus mode. When that happens, and I re-enter the geofence around my home and the unified camera pointing at the driveway detects a vehicle, then it will just open the garage door right as I approach it in a way that feels like magic. A third example is deterring raccoons from digging up the yard. Our backyard can get pretty lively each evening with nighttime critters. So I created an automation to turn on the in-ground irrigation system for just a few seconds when one of two different Unify cameras detects animal motion at night. The sound of the sprinkler rising out of the ground coupled with the spraying water is enough to send those animals running. I'll link to a separate video that I made just for this automation if you'd like to learn more. A fourth way that I'm using Unify cameras in my smart home is just a simple lighting automation. Since each camera has a motion detection entity, I can use that as a trigger for turning on a light when someone enters the room. So if you already have a camera in a room, you don't necessarily need a separate motion sensor. Though in larger spaces, you can combine the camera's motion sensor with other standalone motion sensors as automation triggers to avoid any delay in turning the lights on. Overall, I'm really happy with my Unify security camera setup. It's given me everything that I was looking for. Subscription-free local storage and continuous power all on one platform that integrates nicely with my smart home. If you're using Unify for your home network, it makes sense to seriously consider their line of security cameras if that's something that you're interested in adding. But if you're not already using Unify to power your home's internet, or even if you are, it is worth considering alternative options that may offer more value for the money depending on your situation. Alternative options include Reolink and Hike Vision, but I don't have direct personal experience with these systems. Let me know in the comments what you're using for smart home security cameras and what your experience has been. If you're interested in my Ubiquiti Unify networking setup that powers our entire smart home, you'll want to check out the video here. Hit the like button if you found this helpful and subscribe to the channel for tech reviews and tutorials that help you become more productive. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.